If you are in your 40s, if you are a middle-aged or older guy looking for a yoga routine that doesn't require flexibility that you can do without getting down on the ground, so an all-standing routine with very minimal equipment, this is it. So this is about a 20-minute routine focused on your shoulders, your hips, your core to help set up your posture for the day, to give you energy, to work on a little bit of strength and flexibility and balance. You're going to finish this feeling great and ready for the day ahead. Do your best. Follow along. So go ahead and take it to the top of your mat, or if you don't have a mat, you don't need one, but stand at the top of wherever you're doing this workout. Stand on your right foot. I want you to straighten both legs. Squeeze your thighs so you feel your knees kind of pull up a little bit. Press down through your heels. Make sure that you're not shifting the weight to your toes. You want the weight in the heels and in the toes. And then from here, shift over to your right foot. Come up onto your left toes. Squeeze your right hamstrings, your right glutes. And then from here, slowly lift the left knee up to hip level. Go ahead and focus on a non-moving point at eye level. If you're a little wobbly, that's OK. We're going to do our best to balance here. Might be a little tough today. Balance is fickle. Some days you have it, some days you don't. Try to use both legs here. So if you lift your left knee up, you'll notice your left hip working. And make sure you're squeezing your right glute pressing that right heel, pressing the right hip toward the ground. From here, bring your arms out into T arms, so a straight line from your left hand across your body to your right hand. Press your fingertips away from one another. Relax the shoulders a little bit, and then squeeze your shoulder blades together. So we're opening up the chest, activating the muscles in the shoulders. Still focusing on that non-moving point at eye level. This does take some endurance, so probably starting to feel your legs working. And then from here, last station, bring your arms up to Y arms. So palms are going to face forward, making a Y with your arms. If you need to touch your left foot down, you lose your balance, that's OK. Just bring it right back up. Get bigger through your chest. Push your head up. Squeeze the arms back a little bit more. One more breath. And release. Woo, all right. Muscles are working. Go ahead and switch sides. We're going to come up onto your right toes. Press down through your left heel. So you're pushing your left foot into the ground, pushing your left hip down, feeling that outer hip working. Squeeze your left hamstring. Squeeze your left glute. And then keeping the shoulders stacked over the hips, lift your right knee up to hip level. So notice that I'm not leaning back here, right? I'm keeping the shoulders stacked on the hips. It might feel like you're leaning slightly forward. And then lifting the right knee up until you feel your right hip flexors working. So your right hip crease should have that kind of feeling of muscle burning or muscle activation. And you might be a, wob you might be a bit wobbly here, right? One leg's going to have better balance than the other. Good to be aware of that. Wobbling is good, though. Shaking is good. It means that your body's adapting to it. It means you're getting stronger. It's also a great way for you to, to wake up. And then go ahead and bring your arms to T arms again. So palms face forward, arms squeeze back, shoulder blades pull toward one another. Make sure your shoulders are relatively down. You don't want your shoulders way up here, but mostly down or neutral. And then pulling the shoulder blades toward one another so you feel those muscles inside the shoulder blades working to hold your arms here. If you're having trouble balancing, try to pick a specific space, specific spot on the wall. Stare at that. Breathe in and out of your nose. Yes, we're all getting tired in this, so it's not just you. Legs are getting tired. And then last station, bring your arms up to Y arms. Press your fingertips up without shrugging your shoulders too high. And then squeeze your arms back to really open the chest. Push the top of your head up toward the ceiling. Relax the chin toward the throat. Last couple breaths here. And then slowly release. Whew. All right. Legs are working. Good warm up, guys. From here, we're going to go into a standing high lunge. So right leg forward. Take a big step back with your left foot. Press your left heel toward the ground. It won't touch, but push your left heel toward the ground. Feel the stretch of the front of your left hip flexors. 
You want to stack the shoulders over the hips. And go ahead and just keep your arms at your sides for now. So I want you to see if you can reach your tailbone down. So think about lengthening your lower back here. See if you can shift that into the hip flexors and into your core so we're not creating additional lower back tension. We're strong through this right leg, so push down through the three corner or four corners of your foot, so pushing down through the big toe, the little toe, and through the heel. That's going to cause your right thigh to activate, your right hip. You should feel the inner thigh working, your glute, your quadriceps, your hamstrings. Everything's active in that leg. And then with the left leg, pushing that heel toward the ground, feeling that ankle, that calf start to open up. Now that we're set with the lower body, let's bring the arms up into goalpost arms. So elbows level with the shoulders. Squeeze the elbows back so we want those shoulder blades active. The scapular stabilizers, the rhomboids, right, those muscles between the shoulder blades are working here. Actively opening your pecs. So as you squeeze your elbows back, feeling the stretching through the chest. And for anybody who's going to be on their phones, driving, or at a desk that today. This is a great stretch to open up. So really squeeze the arms back. This is going to help with that rounded posture that most of us tend to have. A couple more breaths here. Maybe go a little bit deeper into the lunge. Squeeze the arms back a little bit more. Maybe a slight back bend. And then release. All right, let's switch sides straight into it. So big step back with the right foot. And you want to make sure that your feet are about hip width distance apart here. So don't line your left foot up right with your right foot. Bring that right foot to the outside a few inches. I'm going to push that right heel toward the ground. Don't let the heel come up off the ground. You want to push it toward the ground so that ankle is active. It's opening up. As you do that, you should feel more opening through your right hip flexors. Squeeze your right glute. That's going to help open the hip flexors even more. If you spend a lot of time sitting, this lunge is really important for that. Get the hip flexors open, reduce that strain on the lower back. Really good counter pose for sitting. And then with that left leg, pushing all four corners of the left foot into the ground, almost driving that left hip a little bit closer to the ground. And as you do that, feeling the inner left thigh working right from the knee all the way to the groin, to the pelvis, your left hamstrings, quadriceps, the glutes, so everything in the lower body is working here. And then if you can, kind of reaching the tailbone down, pulling your belly button toward your low back, trying to flatten out that lower back so we're not creating that extra stiffness or tightness in the lower back. Bring your shoulders back so arms are on either side, framing your body, not in front of you, but right to the sides. And then from there, coming into goalpost arms. Really opening up the chest here, actively squeezing the elbows back, maybe externally rotating your shoulders a little bit so your palms even start to face up. Keep your chest drawn in, so don't puff your chest out. I want you to actually keep your abs tight. So we're opening through the pecs, not just arching the back here. Chin in toward the throat and relax. And now maybe opening up a little bit more, adding in that slight back bend, making sure we're still feeling it opening in the chest, not just a back bend. Still active through the legs, right heel pushing down, core and hips engaged, last breath. Hey guys, if you enjoy this workout, if you want more, I've got a free 30-day Manful Yoga Challenge right here on the Manful Yoga YouTube channel. There's no credit card, no email address required. Just go ahead and click the link in the description below when this workout's finished. All right, and then release. Okay, we're going to grab a strap. If you don't have a strap, don't worry. Grab a dog leash, grab a towel, grab a t-shirt. Whatever you have is going to work fine. And you're going to hold that strap, whatever it is, behind you at about shoulder width distance. Palms face you, elbows squeeze toward one another. Go ahead and stand with your feet about six inches apart. Bend your knees a little bit, squeeze your butt, and then stand up straight. Should have a released lower back as a result of that, so kind of tailbone reaching down, not arching your back. And then from here, with the elbows squeezing toward one another, shoulders 
framing your chest. Go ahead and lift your arms away from you. See if you can get those muscles on the outside back of the shoulder working. So feeling those muscles to the outside of the shoulder blades and kind of just behind where the, the armpit is. Feeling those muscles working as you squeeze the strap away from you. Try to keep your shoulders relaxed down. So you don't want your shoulders shrugging up near your ears. You also want to try to keep the arms straight. If you need to separate your arms a little bit wider, so if you need to hold your hands further apart, that's fine. And if you want to challenge yourself or if you have the mobility for it, you can also bring your hands closer together. Just make sure that you feel like you have um, control over whatever range of motion you're in. You should be able to squeeze the muscles that you're stretching. You should be able to squeeze those muscles in the shoulder blades, in the chest, in the arms. And we're holding here for another 30 seconds. So the point here isn't to go necessarily as deep as you can with the arms or as far as you can, but just getting them into a, a nice, comfortable end range of motion where you can hold it and give your body the time it needs to open up through these tight areas in the chest. You can also arch your back a little bit more here, squeeze the shoulder blades together, open the chest. Try to slow down your breathing. Slow and controlled in and out of the nose. One more breath here. All right. And then release the strap. Go ahead and shake your arms out. And we're going to go into a standing side bend. Now, if you want, if it feels better for you, you can hold the strap between your hands at about hip width distant, not shoulder width, but about hip width. And then stand with your feet, toes touching, heels an inch apart. If that's uncomfortable, you can also stand with your feet a few inches apart. Bring your arms overhead. Try to get your arms straight up overhead without arching your back too much. So a lot of opening in the shoulders as you do this. Squeeze your arms back so that you feel your upper back working. Take a deep breath in, get a little bit taller. And then as you exhale, side bend to the right. So I want you to keep both legs straight. Don't let one leg bend, keep both legs straight. And press your arms up and over toward the right. And then as you inhale, think about breathing into the left rib cage. So breathe into the left rib cage. Feel that area expand as you inhale. And then as you exhale, Allow yourself to bend a little bit further toward the right. Inhale into the rib cage. Exhale further to the right. We're going to do three breaths here. Try to maintain as much height and integrity to your posture as you can. Legs stay straight. Core stays engaged. Thighs are active. Muscles in the upper back are working as you squeeze the arms back and press them up and over. And consciously breathing into that left rib cage to help stretch that area, to open it up. This is going to help your breathing throughout the day. This is going to help your posture, your shoulders, even make sure that you have better breathing so you're better able to handle stress. All right, then bring it back to the middle. I'm going to have you bring the arms down. Relax your arms for a second. Just go ahead and shake it out. Take some deep breaths in and out of the nose. And then we'll go to the other side. So again, whatever you did with the last side, so you have the straps between the hands, use the straps. If you don't want to use the straps, if you're interlacing your fingers, you can do that as well. Bring the arms up. Squeeze your arms back. Make sure that you feel the upper back muscles working. So don't just hold your arms up and leave it at that. I want you to actually squeeze the arms back until you feel the muscles between the shoulder blades working. You should feel a lot more opening in your chest and around your armpits as you do that. But try to avoid arching your back as you do it. Try to keep the ribs drawn in, right? So the abs are tight. Arms squeeze back deliberately opening the shoulders, not just arching your back. Take a breath in, get tall. And then as you exhale, press up and over to the left. Straighten your legs. Inhale to fill up the right rib cage now. And as you exhale, lean toward the left. 
should feel some good opening through the ribs as you do that. Maybe a couple pops as your body starts to open up. Make sure your neck is in a, a nice neutral position, so you shouldn't be pushing your head out in front of you. Try to keep the chin drawn in toward the throat, your head above the shoulders. Legs are strong, core is strong, so squeeze the thighs, push down through your feet, squeeze your abs. Go a little deeper with the exhale. Just manageable depth here. You're not going as far as you can. You're going as deep as you can with control. Still able to feel strength. Still able to maintain control over your breathing. Three more breaths here. Get tall. Squeeze the arms back. Go a little bit deeper. One more breath. Back to the middle. Relax your arms. Once again, three deep breaths here. Shake your arms out. Give yourself a little break. And then final bend here, standing. We're going to go into a standing back bend. So go ahead and lift your arms up. I find it helps. If you want to get your arms a little bit wider than you had before, good idea. Go ahead and press your arms up as high as you can. Lift your ribs up. Lift your chest up. Big breath in. And as you exhale, squeeze the arms back. So first, I want your arms to go back as far as they can. Okay? So not bending too much. Not arching your back too much yet. Just really squeezing the arms back. And then from here, take another breath in. Get taller. And now you're going to arch the back. So lean back into this. Arms will go further back. But now we're focusing on the spine arching. And think about arching just from the mid back up. Try to keep the integrity in your lower back. So don't let your butt stick out behind you like this and your lower back gets super tight. Squeeze your butt, squeeze your glutes to keep your hips under your torso. As you inhale, you're lifting up, you're getting taller. And as you exhale, you're leaning further back, but with control. Glutes, core, thighs are all working here to stabilize. And just very subtle changes in depth with each breath. Last two breaths here. I lied. Two more breaths. I want to keep it consistent with all the bends. Last breath. Get a little taller. Go just a tiny bit further back. And then return to middle. Go ahead and slowly release the hands down. Throw the strap aside. Woo! All right. Good job, guys. From here, we're going to take it into a wide-legged position. Turn your toes slightly in, bend your knees a little bit, keep your abs tight just like you'd have them for a plank. And then here we're going to hinge into a wide-legged half lift. Okay, so keep your upper body parallel to the floor or straight. Don't let your back round just yet. So if you look at me from the side, right, I'm thinking about reaching my tailbone behind me. So I'm trying to tilt my, tilt my pelvis to face backwards, to face behind me. It's not actually going to happen, but I'm thinking about arching my back in this position. I'm staying long through the front of my body. I've got my abs engaged just like I'd have it during a plank. Maybe the fingertips relax. Maybe they touch the ground, maybe they don't. If they're not quite touching the ground yet, you can bend your knees here. And we're focusing on the stretch through the hamstrings and the inner thighs, not so concerned with rounding your back. So keep the spine neutral, meaning your abs engaged, right? We're not, we're not rounding the back. We're not folding. We're staying neutral here, really focusing on the lower body, pushing into the feet, into the outer edges of the feet, 
squeezing the thighs, pushing the knees backwards so that we feel that stretch through the inner thighs. One more breath here. And then take a big breath in. And now as you exhale, maintaining that hip engagement, go ahead and squeeze your chest toward the ground, rounding your back, but safely, right? So we're using our core engagement, using our hips to round. If you have the mobility for this, you can also bend your knees if you notice that your lower back is kind of poking up. Bend your knees a lot, tuck your chin. Make sure that you can still engage your core here. So if you feel totally passive here, right, if you're just completely collapsing, come up a little bit higher. See if you can reestablish that core engagement, that, that hip engagement, squeezing your thighs, squeezing even your glutes here, and then folding with strength. Two breaths here. Slowly come back to that half lift position we were in and then bend your knees and come all the way back up. All right, from here we're going to go into warrior two. So from that wide legged stance, you're going to turn your right foot to face the top of the mat. Bring your left foot a little bit closer to the edge of the mat. So toward the edge that it's facing. And then from here, push your back hip into your front hip. Come into this warrior two or this kind of side facing lunge position. Let's check in with the front leg. So knee is over the ankle and the front foot. Back leg is straight, so don't let this knee bend. Squeeze the left thigh. And here, we want to try and take the arch out of the lower back. So we're going to reach the tailbone down. That's going to make this a more intense stretch. Squeeze your glutes. You're going to feel your groin opening up. And then hug your legs toward one another. So pretend the mat's sliding apart, and you have to squeeze your legs toward one another to prevent that from happening. As you do this, you've got more length through the lower back. Inner thighs are engaged and opening up. Glutes are working. Abs are working. So a lot going on here. It's intense, but this is so, so good for your lower back. Anterior pelvic tilt, tight hips, tightness in the lower back. This is helping with all of that. And then go ahead and bring your arms up so they're level with the shoulders. Press your fingertips in opposite directions. Pull the shoulder blades toward one another and down, and then look over your middle finger. Three breaths here. Continue to push down into your right foot, and you should be able to see your big toe around the knee. If you can't, bring your right hand inside the right knee, kind of tap it out toward the right. You're going to feel your right glute working more as you do that. This helps to put the knee in a safe position. Last breath. All right, straighten the right leg, turn the right foot into where it started, turn your left foot out, and again, bring the right foot a little bit closer to that top or the side edge of the mat, so your left foot isn't pointing directly to the right heel, it's staggered a little bit, and then from here, bend into the left knee, the right hip pushes into the left hip, and if you take a look at my hips here, notice that my hips are level, right, my right hip isn't above my left hip, the right hip is level with the left hip. I'm going to straighten my back leg. So squeeze your right quadriceps, right quadriceps. Make sure that the arch in your right foot is active. So the inside of the arch is lifted off the ground. Bend into that left knee. Make sure you can see your big toe around the knee. And then hug your legs toward one another. Reach the tailbone down. So you'll feel your length, your lower back lengthen a little bit as you do that. Squeeze your glutes. Shoulders are going to stack on the hips. And this is intense, right? We've got the inner thigh engagement, got the core engagement. Check in, make sure you can still see your knee. So lots of left glute engagement. And then bring your arms up. Hands level with the shoulders. Arms squeeze back a little bit. Shoulder blades pull toward one another. Head is up. Look straight over that left middle finger and take three deep breaths. You want to feel the weight of your body centered in your core and your hips right now. Yes, your thighs are working. You're going to feel your knees working too, but most of that weight should feel like it's right in the middle.
All right, and then straighten that leg, turn it in, and bring the legs back together. Hope you guys enjoyed that workout. Subscribe if you haven't already. We put out a new workout every Tuesday. If you are a guy looking to get stronger with fitness, if you also uh, don't like the traditional approach to yoga, you want something more strength focused, more focused on results, less focused on the yoga aspect of yoga, this is a great channel for you. So subscribe, we put out a lot of great content every week. Um, if you want to get started with another morning routine, we have a few of these morning routines already live on this YouTube channel. Go ahead and click above my head right here, and you can check out the first workout from this morning yoga series for guys 40 plus. Thanks for being here. See you in the next video.